Hello, I am Dr. Sridhar and uh, I thank you all for the great support for this channel and I do appreciate uh, your sharing the videos that you like. I would like to inform you that there are more than 1000 videos and I would request you to go through the playlist so that you can utilize whatever information is already there on the channel. If you have not already subscribed, do subscribe and please do like the videos because that is what takes it to the uh, YouTube search option and uh, it would reach more people that way. In this uh, small discussion, I will be discussing undescended testis which is a very important topic for anyone looking after newborn babies. So uh, as you can see here the testis is formed just below uh, the kidney uh, and this develops around 7 weeks after conception. The uh, descent of the testis starts around that stage and there is gibbernaculum testis which guides it down to the groin region. It reaches the top of the groin around 12 weeks then it goes through the inguinal canal and it stays in the inguinal canal during different stages. So if you get a premature baby, it's not uncommon to get an undescended testis. And uh, it usually descends into the scrotum about 4 to 6 weeks before birth, that is starting from 34 weeks to 36 weeks of con conception. And if you get a premature baby in those late preterm babies, you may find the testis on the high scrotum and the scrotal uh, rugosities are not fully developed. As the testis stays in the scrotum, the scrotal rugosities, the pigmentation, all these mature as well. So we have different possibilities if on the newborn examination or in the clinic review, you find that the testis is not in the scrotum. It could be an undescended testis, which is the commonest scenario in the neonatal uh, postnatal checkups. And this is a classic cryptorchidism, which can be unilateral or bilateral. There can be true undescended testis uh, where the testis which is not felt is actually higher up in the descent pathway or it may be an absent testis because the testis was lost due to a vascular insult in utero. Uh, this happens less frequently thankfully. Uh, ectopic testis is where the testis is formed in the normal place but as part of the descent it loses track and it migrates elsewhere. And uh, we have retractile testis where the cremastic reflex, the cremastic muscle contraction is very active. So the testis comes down to the scrotum but it starts getting pulled up uh, due to such certain stimuli, cold and so on. And uh, it's very important to examine in appropriate posture in older kids especially like uh, kneeling posture, squatting posture so we don't miss uh, uh, retractile testis. And ascending testis is where the testis are descended down, maybe it was retractile then it starts shrinking up and it goes up into the pathway and this is uh, more for the pediatricians who would see the older kids. So this is uh, showing you the normal sites of an undescended testicle where it's uh, in the bottom of the scrotum as a normal position. Most commonly it stops between the groin and the scrotum in the inguinal canal region. You may be able to feel the bump there. And sometimes it stops above the groin or stays totally off the normal path. It can be in the thigh, it can be in the side of the abdominal wall. So these are the ectopic positions and uh, we can feel in those areas for ectopic testis if you don't feel it in the inguinal canal. Uh, if it is in the abdomen, exploration is the best option and as we will discuss later, there is no clear role for ultrasound imaging to find out the location. So the undescended testis is seen in 2 to 5 percent of term and up to 30 percent of the premature babies. So the more premature the baby, the higher the likelihood of it not descending because the natural progress is disrupted. If the rest of the genital exam is normal, mainly we look at the size of the phallus, the opening of the penis, whether there is hypospadias, whether there is any concern of ambiguous genitalia, this becomes more important in bilateral and descended testis. So if the rest of the genital exam is normal, the majority will descend spontaneously by four months of age. And in these cases, there is no action needed except to inform the parents about the need to monitor uh, for a higher risk of inguinal hernia because the inguinal canal is open and uh, it's still kept open for the testis to come down and we need to educate them and also the plan to monitor with the urologist around four months of age. Uh, there are a few associated conditions and uh, if it is bilateral or if it is associated with other concerns on examination like micropenis, growth issues with the child, dysmorphism, then we have to consider other conditions. Prune belly syndrome where uh, there is a renal abnormality usually 
and uh, muscular weakness in the abdominal wall can be associated with the muscular weakness of the gibber maculum and this leads to uh, undescended testes being associated neural tube defects again for the same reason that the smooth muscle function or the skeletal muscle function in that region may be affected and prader willi syndrome uh, can be associated with both undescended testes and micropenis as you know it's uh, a disorder where the baby is born with a uh, normal or a smaller size with subtle dysmorphism and uh, the baby has feeding difficulty and starts getting obese as the child grows bigger associated with the uh, learning difficulties we have kalman syndrome and noonan syndrome as well and of course we have the disorders of sexual differentiation which will come into the picture when we have ambiguous genitalia or poorly developed genital uh, system so in terms of clinical features you can quickly pick up a unilateral undescended testis because there is a significant scrotal asymmetry the testis uh, is not descended usually on the left uh, it can be the other way around as well and usually the scrotal sac is well formed with rugosity on the normal side while it is uh, not well formed it's thin on the left side or the side where it is not descended in some cases it can be developed well but you don't feel the testis in these cases it's most likely in the inguinal canal or it may be retractile testis so we recommend two hand palpation with one hand pushing from the top from the anterior superior spine almost like a milking movement the other hand is feeling up from the scrotum and if it is felt we hold on to it and pull it down to see if it's a retractile testis if it's not pulled down it stays where it is in the inguinal canal for example it's more an undescended testis Uh, in older kids squatting or bending the thighs up as well as the cross legged or tailor position could help to bring down the testis which is in the inguinal canal which works like the milking movement which i described earlier uh, as i mentioned earlier we have to carefully assess the phallus the urethral meatus for associated hypospadias as well so these are the various locations which we are talking about so the best position is the testis in the bottom of the scrotum a high scrotal position is often seen in the late preterm babies and supra scrotal inguinal intra abdominal these are the typical undescended testis and uh, where it is will dep- determine how long it takes for it to descend down so uh, we have the inguinal canal superficial inguinal ring the deep inguinal ring and the scrotum these are the anatomical landmarks uh, so the retractile testis is a condition where the testis has descended normally but it retracts up into the inguinal canal intermittently or persistently mostly it's intermittent in relation to stimuli which stimulate the active primastic reflex and the muscle contracts so you can overcome this reflex by pulling down and holding for a couple of minutes in the stretched position so the primastic muscle becomes fatigued and it doesn't constrict back so it stays down after the couple of minutes of holding which means it's due to the hyperactive cremastic reflex if it is a persistent retractile testis especially if it's bilateral there is a slightly higher risk of torsion or even future ascending testis and we should consult the pediatric surgeon some cases may need uh, archaeopexy as we will discuss uh, it is not associated with the same complications as a true undescended testis where there is an increased risk of malignant transformation or subfertility so unlike those in retractile testis the prognosis is good slightly increased risk of torsion especially if there is trauma so we have to be careful about that so why do we worry about the undescended testis obviously parents expect both testis in the scrotum and if they don't see it they are anxious about it so it's very important to pick it up in the newborn assessment document clearly and obviously if you have documented clearly and it doesn't Uh, palpit later it could be a secondary undescended testis as well uh, it's also a good idea while you're examining to show the parents that you are seeing the both testis at that time so the complications i mentioned earlier about the increased risk of inguinal hernia because both have a similar pathway uh, there is also an increased risk of testicular torsion and where the testis lies in the inguinal canal there is a higher risk of trauma as a child gets older um, from compression against the pubic bone for example the scrotal sac moves away if there is injury goes between the thighs but in the case of a pubic come in a inguinal canal the testis is not able to move anywhere else subfertility happens because the temperature of the testis should be kept cooler and that's the reason for the scrotal sac being there and if it is in the inguinal canal for more than 2 years there is a possibility of subfertility the 
duration should be low, shorter for intra-abdominal because the temperature in the intra-abdominal cavity is even higher. Uh, there is a risk of malignant transformation. This may be directly related to what caused the unresented testis in the first place because in some cases this has been reported in the contralateral and the normal testis as well. So it's about uh, double the risk of malignancy testicular cancer compared to the normal population. Uh, there is also potential complications with ectopic testis depending on where it is located. So for a similar mechanism, blunt trauma can injure the testis more easily if it is ectopic and because of the temperature related issues there may be decreased spermatogenesis as well. So what is the approach to management of undescended testis? If it is a bilateral undescended testis with no palpable gonad, it's better to refer to the endocrinologist and we need to do genetic as well as endocrine workup for disorders of sexual differentiation, congenital adrenal hyperplasia and so on. The workup will include ultrasound in this case to look for Mullerian structures like the uterus and the ovary and endocrine workup which uh, is beyond the scope of this discussion. In unilateral undescended testis there is no role for immediate ultrasound. If you can feel the testis in the inguinal canal well and good you document that. If you can't feel it you wait for it and examine it each visit the child comes for follow up. And the referral to the pediatric surgeon or urologist is recommended by 4 months of age. Uh, exploration by laparoscopy or surgical is a method of choice and the surgeon may decide to do an ultrasound to decide on this. If they see it in the inguinal canal, they can go directly for surgical. If they don't see it in the inguinal canal, they can go for laparoscopy. So uh, this is where uh, imaging comes in as well. Either you have concern about the maturation or DSD or you know, the surgeon needs to decide which procedure to do. So that's when we do the ultrasound. So the timing of intervention is very important. So ideally it should be between 4 and 12 months. We don't do before 4 months because natural descent is likely. Some people say up to 6 months. So between 4 to 6 and 12 months is the ideal situation. But if there is a delay certainly you should do it before 2 years of age. There are comparative studies which have compared intervention before 2 years and between 2 and 3 years and supportality is more where the intervention is uh, around 3 years so better to do it before 1 to 2 years at least. Exploration and archaeopexy is a procedure of choice. Of course while exploring in some cases you may see that the testis or the remnants are not seen or you may see a nubbin of tissue that is the vanishing testis. In some cases we can feel a nubbin of tissue in the scrotum that doesn't mean the testis uh, is absent or uh, destroyed. Sometimes the undescended testis may be associated with the epididymis alone coming down and you may be feeling that. So don't uh, assume that there is no undescended testis and what you're feeling is atrophic testis. You may still uh, consider exploration in these cases where you feel a nubbin in the scrotum which you think is atrophic testis. In 20 to 30 percent of the cases where the testis doesn't descend by four months, the testis may not be seen at exploration. So this is an example of absent testis. Most of the time it's due to a torsion or a vascular accident destroying the testis in that site or it may be uh, congenital anarchia where the testis doesn't form. Uh, hormonal uh, treatment with HCG was tried previously but there is no clear benefit and most centers don't use it. There are some studies which suggest that if you combine surgery with hormonal treatment, the fertility results may be better, but that's not a clear strategy. If there is associated inguinal hernia, it's treated at the same time with the archaeopexy because you don't want to go in for too general anesthesia unless the hernia presents earlier with obstruction. So in which case you'd explore for the testis earlier as well. So the prognosis if treated within two years and fixed with archaeopexy, the outcome is good. The fixing is important because without fixing there is a higher risk of torsion and as I mentioned earlier some retractile testis which is uh, more prominent or persistent may need archaeopexy as well. Uh, slight concerns with sperm count and future fertility is there and of course this is a growing concern even in the general population. There is a slightly increased risk of testicular cancer more if it was in the intra-abdominal position than in the inguinal position. The risk is around two times higher so it's a good idea that the parents inform their child in case they had uh, delayed uh, descent of the testis or treatment for the undescended testis so that they can have a closer look for examination of the testis on their own as they grow older. So this is very important to prevent the risk of cancer not being detected. So uh, this is a quick review of this important topic and I do hope you liked it. Do share. Thank you.